part two on my in-depth guide of getting the hidden lotus skin free to play in the first seven days. Uh, I covered a lot in the last video about spreading power and the build basics of building and research. In this video though I'm going to look at um, other techniques to give yourself an advantage. The first of course is your window of opportunity or your jump window. So uh, I only did a 20 minute jump on my um, seven day challenge. The reason for that is uh, the clock on the glory event, which has the 1.5 million reward, starts as soon as you make your account. So I didn't want to be in a kingdom restricted to City Hall level 7. But what I was interested in is redeem codes. Also, there was a, in the background, a seasonal event, a New Year seasonal event. But let's have a look. Firstly, I had the generous supplies which is what you, you can get from using clicking into an old account, restarting, and this gave me the advantage of 500 gems and 5 gold keys and some other bits to get me going. Secondly, there were 5 active redeem codes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I collected those. I also did an event that's finished now called the Wall of Arrows. It's gone now, which gave... Uh, VIP points and more gold keys. Let's have a look now then. After, so that was one, two, three, four, five redeem codes. I then moved to the New Kingdom, did the Wall of Arrows again, and then another one, two, three, four, five redeem codes. And if we have a look here, there's a huge amount of XP, lots of gold, uh, gold keys giving me a real head start. Now remember, gold keys directly relate into power. Let's just open a gold key now and see if it gives us any power. Obviously at the start of the game, the easier it is. Because 10 blue heads, for example, is a um, is something then you'll be able to upgrade one of your commanders. Let's have a look what we can get. So nothing there. That wasn't a very good one. Now look, a one hour speed up. So that's brilliant. That relates to about 300 power. Every hour speed up in your head is going to be about 300 power at a minimum. There we go. <coughs> and again. So, pretty rotten gold keys. But let's have a look. I think I can upgrade something. Where is he? There we are. So, that's... How much is that? 900 power. Just for opening gold keys, not for doing anything. There, of course, uh, there's a better seasonal event to start your account in. But what I would suggest to do, though, is maybe let the seasonal event start and then join in day three or so. So the first three days are open. Uh, and I think that gives a better chance to get all of the, um, to get more uh, rewards out of that event. Let's also have a look now at, uh, so that's, all right, the day of the week. So, I, during my jump, only had the opportunity, once I was VIP level 5, to buy these one-hour speed-ups here once. That's because I started on, I think, around a Friday, and I hadn't got VIP 5 by the Sunday, which meant I did not have this unlocked, so, of course, if you start earlier in the week, if you start on a Tuesday, you have the time to scout the map, get the VIP increases from the map, not using gems, so that you'll be able to collect these uh, these valuable 51-hour speed-ups for 50 gems each, um, which I wouldn't usually suggest to spend, but if you're going for the 1.5 million, you need to generate the speed-ups from somewhere. So just to keep that in mind, I think to start on a Tuesday which means that you will definitely, as the week progresses, you will get a Sunday reset within your one-week uh, power challenge. Let's just now talk a bit about the psych psychology of, of trying to get the 1.5 million. Because the truth is, it does feel impossible. And as you're doing it, it feels impossible. But what I'd ask you to do is try and break it down into 15,000 uh, sections. So 15,000 power increase is 1%. So 
So just keep working towards the next 1% and you'll start to find it a lot easier. You'll start to see where the power is going to come from. So once you've got your city hall to level 11, that's 16,000 power, that's 1%. Brilliant, that's done. Let's go to the academy. Now you see these first one, two, three, four, five researches here. All of these can be done through the scouting. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment, but if we add them up, that's uh, five, uh, nine, another five, so that's 14. So there we are, and 1600 there. We're already another 1%, and that's 1% just from scouting. And scouting is something where you don't need speed ups, you don't need to spend AP or experience points books. You can get that for free. So that's a free 1% just from scouting. And this is how you need to have the mindset. Just keep looking to get the next 1%. Work towards the next 15,000. Not look at the 1.5 million and start thinking, well, how am I going to do that? Just keep working towards the next 15,000. <coughs> so going back to scouting. So it's important not to spend gems on VIP. This is because you need those gems to generate speed ups to move your buildings forward. And remember, if you can get to the next city hall, you then get more gems. So let's have a look. VIP um, 5 uh, is, I forget, 9,000 or so. 9,000 points or so, it's not that hard to get. But what I would ask you to try and do is to do it from scouting alone, which is difficult uh, and is time consuming. But of course, it's a huge return that you're saving those gems. You then unlock in the VIP shop the ability to buy the extra one hour speed ups. And 50 gems for one hour speed up is pretty good for what we're trying to do. In general, not good, but for what we're trying to do, it's pretty good. So, uh, one trick that I use when I'm doing the... Um, two tricks that I use when I'm doing the um, scouting is to be aware when to collect your villages. What you do not want to do is uh, have this... Uh, the technology bit here as far as they can go. Let's say you've got 55333... Three, 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 and the reason why you're not getting the sickle or masonry or a ha hand axe is because you haven't got your academy high enough. So don't collect villages if you do not have the room to improve these um, technologies. Uh, I forget what academy you need to get to before you can unlock all of these. But just be careful not to be collecting villages um, when you're unable to progress these uh, especially the valuable masonry. Also, keep in mind that uh, you don't really want to do low caves. I did do low caves at the start because it's an extra 50 VIP if you're lucky and it's a lot of green heads that turns into power. So I would start by doing the low caves. But if you look here, like me, you see all these caves I haven't done. As things were getting better, as I was progressing more strongly, I stopped doing the low caves. So do the low caves at first, but then stop when you're having some success or if you feel you're heading in the right direction for getting the um, the rewards. Sorry, the 1.5 million. Also, with scouting, I started in an alliance around here. I scouted this whole area, and then as I'd gained enough power to look for a more stronger alliance... I then went to right over here to where my scouting, uh, this was all fog to the right. What I did is I went to the frontier of my fog. So when I moved alliances, I moved alliances away from the zone I was in, which would make scouting easier. Because if you're closer to the fog, you'll clear it quicker. Especially if your troops, if you go offline, your scouts go all the way back home. So if you're at the frontier, you will clear it quicker. I would also suggest I'm really not into uh, sending my scouts out to the sanctums when they're revealed. I like to, I definitely think it's quicker to uh, clear fog neatly and start around the edges and clear fog neatly. I did also use my kingdom maps again just to speed up, just to get those 
caves more quickly uh, and get those villages unlocked so that I could get this first 15,000 of economic to technology power for free. Let's have a look now. Let's also talk a bit more about gems. So I, as I say, as I'm not a barb chainer, I had to go to the courier station. I did, I spent on refreshing. I spent on anything that was better than 50 gems per hour. So I would have brought this three hours for 108. I would have brought that uh, five minutes for 12. Um, also, I was buying the silver keys and I was consistently refreshing this. This is where my gems were going. I did also at one point when I was flushing gems, I think after the sanctums, and they say you can only spend gems so fast in the courier shop. I did spend 15,000 gems on, where is it? I spent 15,000 gems on one of these. Uh, a 24 hour speed up, which works out about 62.5 gems per hour. So not brilliant, but I was flushing gems after the sanctums. I only got five sanctums, but I was flushing gems on the sanctums. So I did do a 24 hour speed up, but it was to finish a city hall which meant I was immediately rewarded more gems. Uh, you see now, I did, when I finished the task, I was only VIP 5 still. I have moved that to 6, because of course you can get in trouble without unlocking the second building queue, because uh, it costs 150 gems a day if you need the second building queue. And I was caught by that once, because I had an unlocked VIP 6, because instead of using gems on VIP, I was using them on speed ups. So let's have a look. We talked about scouting. Move to the frontier. Okay, so this is a, a nice little trick. So you probably aren't going to be used to joining weak alliances. But one of the advantages of weak alliances, or uh, wherever you can join when your power is low, is I would suggest is you don't move around too much. So the first day, join an alliance. Any alliance would do that is giving you the helps. Once you've joined that alliance, um, do not spend anything in the donations until game reset. Save all your donations for the next day. Uh, so if you're lucky enough to have 20 at midnight, which well midnight UK time, whatever your reset time is, you've then got a really good chance of getting an eight hour speed up, which is a ginormous boost to your account. Um, on that first day so you wait to reset you stay in the weak alliance for at least a day and a half when the next reset goes you've got a chance to win that eight hour speed up which is really valuable so that's the donations so really i'm coming to the end of, of what i can talk about here there's one more thing i'm going to show is i say i don't know how i'm not much of a barb chainer either. there's lots of videos out there showing you how to barb chain but this is something that i sometimes do where i will take uh, an aoe commander let's go here reduce the power of the marches so that's now twenty-seven thousand. so here we are attacking then you just move it around so this is like barb chaining but if you see i've summoned all the weak barbarians you have to go in, stop. And hopefully, I think I should hit that three. So there we go. I've double counted the barbarian kill. Uh, so when that finishes, I'll show you. Which with during the Lohar trial, I mean it's time consuming. I usually four march. So that's all. Do another one now. So there we go. This one's in a lovely spot. Walk to the right side of it that I want. And I say it's not quite barb chaining, it's more shooting fish in a barrel. But this is a way of double counting your Loha rewards, getting a bit of extra experience. But it's very time consuming, so I wouldn't suggest doing this. But there's loads of videos on there on how to barb chain. But all this one is doing is you move up against a tight spot. So if I show you on the, on the teleport. Do you see how, so one side is blanked out because of this water and mountains. And then I'm able to, there we go, let's try and get that 10. So, 
move down. I said it's time consuming. So start there. But then you have to move, but you don't want to run over it. Pause. Let's move down here a bit. So I say not quite barb chaining, a lot easier, but to double count those rewards, let's see that what this should hit, I think. And there we are, beautiful. But I say what I do, it takes it's a bit time consuming is that I, I uh, you have to summon all the barbarians, and this is just shooting fish in a barrel. It's not barb chaining, but it does add up in the same way. Let's have a look at that last one. So there we are, that was only two, a level 12 and a level 3. Then, of course, resummon the level 3, resummon the level 12. And that way you can get extra rewards. I didn't do a huge amount of this. And as you see, oh, well, that was a kill. I nearly misjudged how strong the march would be. That was 30, 27,000 in tier 2. Um, and there we go, this was pretty good. 1, 2, 3, 4. So four. that would have been 4 Loha rewards. And 1.8, 1.5, 302, and 151. So you can see how that can make a massive difference with your rewards. Um, also keep in mind that remember you're a sleeper account. Uh, do not be tempted to spend your alliance coin on three hour speed ups. It is very tempting. They say you're doing everything you can. But don't hurt your chances for getting the 600k alliance coin. It's a lot to save up. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're doing your one week challenge. Uh, I would also suggest, I mean, I didn't do this solo. It's nice to have a few friends, a bit of support. Because then, as I say, you've got information coming from other alliances. The reason why I moved from Zone 1 was because there was war. Do not get involved in any type of combat or war or anything that will result in the loss of troops. Uh, I simply moved when the war started in Zone 1. I moved and joined this alliance here, G43, who got five Sanctum Level 1s, which was a really great reward. Uh, some great flag building from them. And they say five Sanctums. Well, 40 Sanctums were at the middle of the night. I would always suggest to try and be greedy, but that's for another video, how to get extra Sanctums. But certainly if you're in a group, um, because you're all trying your best to get into different alliances if you have information coming in about what's going on in those alliances if they're having chests being dropped what I would suggest if anybody's watching this that was looking to do this on a higher scale that if there's enough of you or enough sleepers starting from level 1 is to start your own alliance but not look to build flags or city halls sorry, centre fortresses instead build a progress hub so you start the alliance and you go straight to technology and instead of doing architecture like you should or greater alliance like you should if you were to do uh, together we rise and there's 50 of you doing sleepers together you could get together you we rise to the maximum level which would be an extra 120 seconds which on 15 helps would be an extra half hour speed up every single building that you do. So that would be a massive, massive boost to your uh, first week challenge. But you'd obviously need the organisation and the management of an alliance to do that. But that would be one way of massively reducing the damage to your account. That if you were in a alliance, before, obviously you're not building out to the Sanctum. So you'd... Do together we rise as much as you can. Then at about day three or four, you're dispersed from the alliance. Go and do the sanctums. But then you can always come back. And that is an option which would really boost a larger number of sleepers. So I hope these tips are helping. Uh, I hope I'm telling you some things that you didn't already know. Um, oh, uh, one thing I would say about the... Uh, another thing, an extra thing about the commanders is you've got to think about your return on epic heads. If you have a look at my Sun Tzu, you'll see that he's actually quite behind. The reason for this is, yes, I get a lot of, I got a lot of free heads from progressing the city halls, but I've not spent 
any epic heads on him. In fact, I only spent the universal epic heads where it was a 10 cost. For example, the first four skills of this cost 40, uh, each skill given about 1600 power, uh, and then I got the others through key rewards. Again, I then spread out my universal heads. I spent them on <coughs> Imop, or whatever his name is. Um, I have since spent some more on him since getting the 1.5 million. But I got this skill here. The first four parts of this skill done. And by spreading out the universal heads, i.e. 10 per skill, as opposed to 20 per skill or 30 per skill, like you would usually as you progressed Sun Tzu towards expertise, like a lot of people do. Uh, I got a much higher return, power return, on my use of universal gold heads. Okay, I think that's all I've got now. If you've got any questions, please, please put them in the comments below. And I really hope, hope this helps somebody uh, progress their account to 1.5 million. Let's just go to hospitals for one last second, though. There we are. £20,000 on that hospital. Think of it, that's over 1% of the target. Break it down to 15,000 chunks. You're going to make it a lot more manageable. It's just 115,000 chunks. Thanks for watching.